on the net too high, like a pallet. It be all good, toss your clothes like yeah. a salad. Yeah! <laughs> it's Friday, bitches! It's the Rollout Show. Speedy and friends, and I be... Speedy! Up in this. Beyond! Yeah, I'm getting my shit back, baby. Yes, yeah, sir. In the building we have... The Poetess. Yes, you are. In the building we got... <laughs> Kente Scott representing the yay. How the fuck you get it? Hey, they let me in the back door. <laughs> we got a back door? They do now. Oh, okay, cool. We have a front and a back door. Yeah, that's what, that's what she said. <laughs> really, Speedy? Yeah, I bought my park back too, bitches. Yeah. Stop wearing a park because you niggas don't like it. At least park. make it a defined part. It's I like, haven't got, my hair hasn't gotten to that. How they yet. say the lines are fuzzy. Oh, <laughs> Your part lines. is fuzzy. Blurred lines. Blurred, Blurred lines. part. Blurred part. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about that. It is Friday. Hopefully you're on your way to somewhere or you're getting ready for the weekend. And yeah. I'm getting ready for the weekend. I got to go to a, some shit with my wife. I don't know what it is when you got to go with your wife. Man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be no, fun. You married, Kitta? No, not at all. That's how I know it's not going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys going, Speedy? I don't know. She planned some shit with her. Uh, you can bring the music down a little bit. She planned some shit with her uh, office. And then she goes, oh, did I tell you? No, nah, bitch. You know. <laughs> so if I don't go, which, you know, y'all women always go. So, you know, I have something planned. Like, bitch, I ain't planning on staying home. And yeah, that's why she didn't tell you. She, oh, I didn't tell you? No, because no, I would have planned to be, not be here. <laughs> so now I got to do that. And then other shit is happening in my house. Like what? Stepson got arrested. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. That's at real. Walmart. He do at tell. At Walmart? What the hell is he stealing from Walmart? Shoplifting? Handy. This nigga. <laughs> that's all you say when the call comes. This nigga. Uh, somebody help me out. The number to call in to. Is uh 323-293-3375. And um <clears throat> Yeah, he got wait by the Walmart cops. Uh, but how much candy do you have to steal to get arrested? Well, here's what I said. This I said, my man, this is 2015. There's cameras everywhere. <laughs> there are cameras. I said, you know the little black things being the ceiling? Yeah. Them cameras. And they even have like the little detectors yes. in the product, like but, probably inside the candy wrapper. But did he steal it or was he just took one out and was eating it? Because that's sampling my grandmama's house. <laughs> <laughs> He's, st- I don't know what he oh, And then when it, because I get the call, she goes, um, Walmart call. I said, Walmart? <laughs> Called you? What the fuck happened to Walmart? I, take, I, I don't think I stole it. Did he get arrested or well, they you know, held they call, him in the store? They held him in the store. Oh, okay. They didn't want to do that. That's kid arrested, though. That's enough. Yeah. 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 I crime. said, I told you, you should scare the shit out of him. Call I, w- I was such. <laughs> I used to steal candy, too. <laughs> I stole Donuts. One. Call in let me know how hard I should go in on my stepson. Yeah, I stole one thing in life. I stole a little plastic horse. I was like six out of thrifties in Oakland. My father found it in my pocket, beat my ass, made me walk back inside and apologize. Never, never. And stole there's ever the since. problem because I can't beat it. I ain't his dad. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't. And his dad, you know. Yeah. You, is this the seventeen year old? Yeah. Oh, what are you stealing candy for? He's seventeen, <laughs> nigga. He, he, Cause I said, my man, what is it? Tell me what the fuck going on in your life that you need to let me know. Who steals candy? Yeah, he, he getting his strikes for you the do wrong that reason. at 7-Eleven. You go five niggas deep at 7-Eleven, yeah. two people buy, three niggas steal. steal. That's how you do it. You steal Slurpees <laughs> and you steal candy at 7-Eleven. Two motherfuckers buy some shit. Everybody else go, nah, I'm good. And there we got like nine Snickers. Yeah. He ain't even Her- got a good holiday to make. Like it was Valentine's Day and I had no money. My girl wanted some candy. It's July. 4th. He just doing shit. that's like, like I, I, he just sat there on the couch like <laughs> he had that. Like I'm gonna kill the whole family. Look, so I was kind of I was about to go in. I was like, nah, I'm gonna lock my door. Okay, tonight. now where where is his daddy? In a whole another part of town. Oh, I see. Well, here's my question to everybody. What kind of discipline do you do? Because I can't whoop his ass. Yeah. So I said. I mean, does, well, they say, you know, PlayStation, does he have any of that? Does no, he, we've what, been, what he's he been like? fucking up. This is the thing. He's been fucking up for a minute. So he, so that's already been repeated. All that shit, nigga. He, so, so he all the school punish- in flip-flops. All the punishment shit. It's been done. It's already been taken. <laughs> Ain't no other shit left. He walking around, no door on his um, <laughs> got beads now he got shit (laughs) that's a tough situation because i've seen relationships where the kids actually break up the relationship because 
the you know the stepdad is not able to discipline the kids the mother and that's what he's protective. that's what he's missing because there's no consequences for what when he fuck up and i try i'm trying to tell her that i said for my for Donald and Dominic, my other son. Nigga, you, Why wouldn't she want you to discipline you? him? Because he's not mine. I, I, he's, he's 17, ma- it's he, too late. He is yours. You've well, adopted it, him. You're married. He's 17, it's too late. And he's a stepdad, so yeah. it's a, it's a yeah. gray area. Yeah. I got some boys. Because what I'm going to do, hit him? Hey, but you could uh, hey, then you I'm might have to snatch that collar up. I thought about that too, but here's my thing. I want to be asleep and then a little kid with a pistol going, <laughs> I'm going to kill you because you. <laughs> and then I'm like, and then I'm on unsung. You want no Not unsung <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 forensic files. <laughs> <laughs> and he died. Mm-mm. No, I don't need that. So call in. Let me know what I should do. 323-293-3375 is the number to call in. Two has it written on the, the uh, board on, the, on the screen wrong. It's actually... Two nine three 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 seven five and not three seven two five. Damn, how you dyslexic? <laughs> he's a dy- dyslexic typer. He's too many numbers, too many fingers. <laughs> so that's what happened, and so and I said, you stole. Can- Who stole candy? What kind of candy did he steal, though? I didn't want to get it. I mean, because that's what I got to know. Was it now or later? It's got to be something good. Did you steal some Jolly Ranchers? Don't you? Here's the thing, nigga. I've never seen him eat candy. <laughs> that's what I said, and I said, first of all, let me make sure I got this right. I ain't never seen you eat no candy. I'm never. It's not like he walk around and go, "You gonna get a couple dollars? Go get some candy." You know, kids that eat candy yeah, yeah. all the time. Eat candy. Yeah. He don't eat candy. Well, maybe it was like a. He and that's why I said to myself, maybe you are trying to to convey something to us and you don't know how to do it. I say, you here's your chance to tell me right now what's going on. What? Well, we ain't do it. You got a house. Your cable. The cable work. You ain't nobody whooping your ass. We ain't got no dope dealers in the house. Yeah. And I don't get it. He might be trying out for a gang. That might be gang initiation. He might be trying out for the. And cavity. I thought that too. He might be trying out for the cavity creeps. Go and I said, now, candy. do you really want to go to jail? You soft as hell, nigga. They have you bent over every rail in the motherfucking yeah. penitentiary. I don't know. I think that's a conversation you need to have with your wife uh, because well, you like should be you able that. to. I mean, they He's need a 17. man. That's his problem. I don't care how old he is. He's still a minor. Do you have a? Like a stadium around there, you just get a whistle, run him up and down them stairs till he throw up. You know the old track. No, I said this was the, this all I can give him. Hey, when you get home at two thirty, I want all these walls clean. <laughs> Every wall in this mother. And then house. if he doesn't, there's what you gonna He'll do? Be like do them walls tomorrow. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what he do. He go, he leave and go to school at eight o'clock. Don't come home till eight. I said at nigga, night, nigga. Yeah, what does he do? Not stealing candy out of Apparently Walmart. stealing How about lock him out Like if he's not home yes. By 6 o'clock Let his ass well, stay I, out I, All night Cause I had to switch that up Cause at first He was coming home After I said Check this out pimp When them lights go down In the street You need to be home When the lights come on You need to be in the house I That nigga say Yeah yeah, yeah. So this nigga <laughs> Pushing the envelope So it get dark He like Yeah alright <laughs> And I said What are you doing till 8 Are you looking for a job well, And then he come home And fall asleep Yo, wake your motherfucking ass he up! Out smoking weed. That's I know, what and he I know, is. and yeah, I know. We found out about <laughs> that's the signs. That's what I <laughs> Sleep all fucking night. Yeah. Hopefully, it's just weed. But he might be getting taller. You know, the teenagers they sleep a lot and they grow. He might be six twelve by tomorrow. He might. Be. He ain't gonna do him no good. <laughs> yeah, he ain't shooting no baskets. Yeah, he ain't playing no ball, man. Yeah. And you tall, still in the Walmart, you definitely gonna get caught. <laughs> well, he is six twelve. We walk real slow. And I said, my man, you know they have fake customers in Walmart. They notice kids when they come in and they act like they buying shit, but they tell the motherfucker in the thing, keep an eye on yeah. blue shirt. Yeah. And there you went, took the snake. I said, my man, you know what's next. You know what? My parents would have let them take me to juvenile yeah. hall. I told her. I said, <laughs> she called me. She said, well, they want me to come here. I said, why don't you just have the police pick him up one time? He got to see this yeah. shit is real. Mm. He don't think life is real. Mm. He think this shit is all like, well, you just candy. Yeah. Let him go to juvie. My father told me. He's like, you go to jail? I'm leaving you there. Yeah. yeah I told her. I, I ain't I'm coming good. to visit I, I, you. Yeah. Not putting no money on your book. Yes. You be like, you get I out when they let you out. I was like, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to test that. <laughs> yeah, Kente. You don't that. want Kente no. in jail. That's, no, no. You be braiding nigga hair. <laughs> Washing so drawers. my name is Kente. <laughs> you be crying. Hey, hand, me that, hand me that Vaseline. <laughs> It was just candy. But Speedy, you've Walmart. been in jail. That time you told the story about you and your dad were in jail at the same time. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day gift is that? <laughs> so, for those who don't know. Anyway, I've, I ain't always been a comic. But anyway, hey, so. 
Taking downtown Skid Row. Skid Row. I thought about too. I think I might do that. So I'm in County up by Magic Mountain. Oh, damn. Okay. So the, the Wayside. Wayside. Thank you. So <laughs> Wayside <laughs> has two, about three different levels. So you have the bottom, middle, top. Top is where, you know, you got, uh, they see, that's where they would always put the uh, drunk drivers. They got 60 days, 90 days, right. whatever. So you know all, you the know middle, the, levels. Okay. the middle, you got 30 days. The bottom, you just came in, you you know, that's where they send you mm-hmm. to your court date. So I'm in the middle, got 30 days. I'm in, out down the Caldwell. My boy said, hey, man, this is a Donald Ray Caldwell up the hill. I said, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think you might know him. It ain't Donald Ray Caldwell, too. I was like. Fuck out of here. So, nigga, I go up the hill. Hey, let, and so, so we'll do it. Hey, Don Ray, <laughs> somebody here to see you. I went, Dad? Oh, <laughs> uh, what you doing here? <laughs> he said, Bart, and he tried to discipline me. The fuck you doing in jail? Uh, hold coming, up, Pimpin. No. Coming to see you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dad mad at me because I'm in jail and I'm looking at him like, uh, nigga. What, what were you in jail for? No. Sh- shoplifting <laughs> <laughs> Practice shit <laughs> uh, What was I in jail for? I forgot I just pled guilty And got 30 days The funny part is uh, You know what you was in jail for Speedy The funny part is Parents always be like Pimpin I want you Pandas. to follow in my footsteps right. And your daddy was like Nigga I didn't tell you to follow in these footsteps <laughs> My daddy was in jail <laughs> He was in jail jail He was in jail 60 days So I, every day I'd go up and go kick with my dad And <laughs> and his buddy His, his road dog be like Hey Don Ray Your son here I'm like, nigga, I don't need you to keep announcing when I come Is up Is that here. what they called you too when you were growing up, Donald Ray? If people did, if they called the house, everybody knew me by Speedy. So if I answered the phone, they went, Donald Ray there, I knew they wanted to talk to my dad. Hey, oh, but okay. was it like penitentiary too when Donald Ray had the cool pimp, <laughs> the cool pimp sale? Oh, my dad, Donald Ray. <laughs> I did, Donald Ray, I did. I, I feel like I know him now. <laughs> he had like the old pimp sale with the, with the fur seat nah, and everything. It, uh, and up there. Three little it, men. In and Wayside, it's, it's, it's a... Dorms. Oh shit! Okay. So you just have bunk beds. So oh. my daddy was on top bunk. I don't know how he was getting up there. <laughs> I said, "Dad, you gotta get your bottom bunk." He was like, "I ain't never getting down from here." <laughs> so help me down from the top bunk. <laughs> Let me get on your back. <laughs> I said, "That's not a good look for my dad to be on the top bunk." So I'm negotiating with a little young nigga. Hey, can my dad now, nigga? <laughs> I'm like, I got 45 more days, man. Said, Your daddy man. up there with his feet swinging. Hey, son, how you doing? <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> what a good look. <laughs> Give me a second to jump now. <laughs> so you had to turn around and his feet trying to catch the rail. <laughs> and a one and a two. <laughs> yeah, that was. That's all Thanks bad. for bringing that yeah, up. Yeah, you brought that up. You brought this. I mean, we were talking about jail, right? Your daddy never been in jail? I don't think so. Hate this bitch. <laughs> You're I, I was in jail one time Damn. for like eight hours. For what? It was petty. We were having <laughs> an underground party and we were selling alcohol. What? And to minors? I, but at least I was checking ID. <laughs> I wasn't just giving it to people. So why'd you go to jail? She for out. selling alcohol she at said, a party. She said something to the officer a little sideways. Fuck you. Was no, alcohol. but the cold was part ID. was I got uh, me and my homegirl got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they arrested us, and then they put my homeboy in the back of the police car with us too. But this nigga had weed on him, oh. and they let him go. <laughs> and they took me and my homegirl. Yeah, he jail. snitched. Your mama, he snitched. Your mama came and got you. <laughs> no, um, we made money that night, so we had to take the money we made to bail us out. Larry. This in Oakland? No, I was here in LA. Wow. Damn, you was older. I was, he was like, saying, he was grown. like you knew better. Speedy, Early twenties. Speedy, Speedy just judged you right there. You was grown <laughs> doing this shit. But it was not a kid party. It was. Now did you have to go to court and all that shit? Um, we went to court and the officer or somebody didn't show up and they dropped it. It's not even on my record nowhere. No more. <laughs> no more. It got expunged. All we did was we got arrested around two in the morning. So what was yourself? We slept. What, and was, what kind of liquor? Dark. Everything. We had a bar going on. <laughs> plastic bottles. <laughs> Everything from no the bottle logos. Shelf. Just selling no. shit. Plastic bottles. We even plastic vodka, plastic rum. Exactly. Probably sold it to the undercover. Exactly. What you want to drink? Right, exactly. You want, you want to check my ID? No, you don't need no ID. What you want to drink? 
<laughs> do you have a license? We don't need no motherfucking license, nigga. Do you want something to drink or not? This nigga asked for a license. Five Hands behind your, your back. <laughs> click, click. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You serious? Girl, wait a minute. Call my mama. <laughs> Look, you going to take me to jail over some Hennessy. They, they actually could have just gave us a citation. But I don't know. They took they took our ass. So they came in fake like they was buying some shit. Yeah, they they were undercover cops. They came in black or white. It was I think it was a white girl and they was bored. <laughs> you don't know them. You supposed we to had go. a mix. It was they was at that party all night till about one thirty. <laughs> like uh, okay, uh, let's go to the bar and shut this bitch down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tipsy right now. This yeah. bitch is filling these cups up. Ain't no ice in this. Yeah. Uh, look here. Uh, we're going to tell you and the three friends behind you. It's just one. All three of them bitches coming. I know. <laughs> they arrested me and my homegirl and Was they let surprised? my homeboy go. Um, <laughs> it was so late that when we did get to jail, we just slept until we were bailed out. <laughs> y'all, y'all was hungry. Me just look here. We ain't gonna, whatever I got in my shoe, that's what my bail is, okay? <laughs> Nigga, poet is you a pimp? What? He was trying to get you. Uh, was we had a phone? phone in our cell too. A real a phone? pay phone. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. <laughs> I have, I have, I, the first time I really got arrested was in Santa Monica. I was, I was said trying, the first time. I was trying to steal cars. Anyway, <laughs> I so told you, Speedy. I get pulled over. And, well, I see the police, so I just pull over and act like I'm going to my family. I, I don't know. It's a sign that said "Don't park never." <laughs> <laughs> but I just pulled over thinking he gonna think I'm going so I fake like I'm going to the house I knock on the door I was like hey uncle so the police come the lights come on he's like uh, sir come here and I'm looking all wide eyed hey what's happening uh, do you know who lives here yeah my uncle lives here and this white man came out who the hell is that I went god damn <laughs> so the police officer went talking to him he's like I don't know him uh, sir put your hands behind your back yeah plenty of chance to run Hey man, I ain't know this. <laughs> CD, you gotta so, put your name to you. So, he was like, I'm just gonna let this play out. He go, you know where you parked at. This is no parking, never. I went, God damn. So I had all in the front seat, I had screwdrivers, <laughs> uh, vice grips, all kind of what he called burglary tools. Three or four blog punk radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's called evidence, is what so, this called. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, take me to Santa Monica's jail. First time I ever going to jail. So he's like, you got a phone call. So they had a roller phone that went to each cell. Mm-hmm. So they rolled the phone to my cell. So, you know, a couple of niggas in the cell with me. I'm like, so I said, well, how much is the bill? He said, he said, you know, let me go find out. So I get on the phone with my mother. She's like, hello. I said, hey, hey mom. Like, Where you at? <laughs> I'm in jail. I'm, I'm in jail. This was your first time, Speedy? First yeah. time. So the you were cell. crying? Nick, I was broke down. Done. You were in the county? No, I was in Santa Monica. Uh, oh, police station. wow, you are weak. Wow. So the dudes, I can hear the niggas behind me like, this nigga here. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm in jail. She said, well, how much is the bail? I said, hold on. <laughs> how much is the bail? My man said, uh, oh, my God, how old were you, Speedy? He said, 10000 I went, oh, shit. <laughs> Mom, it's $2,000. She said, click. She said, stop crying, boy. It's only $1,000. I was like, okay. Okay, you, you got $1,000? She said, no. But I make a phone call. Where are you at? I would have left your ass. So I'm hating the phone up. And then some dude went, hey, man, pass the phone down from that crying ass nigga in the cell. <laughs> I was like, fuck all you niggas. <laughs> You said that to yourself. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Internally, I and I, mean, I sat, I sat on my bunk right by the cell, <laughs> waiting, wide awake, all like night. waiting, like please, like my, I don't know where my mother was. Were you alone? Was. No, it was like two other dudes in the cell. Was you on the mm. top bunk with your feet swinging like Donald Ray? I didn't, I didn't want to get in. I didn't want to get comfortable or nothing, nigga. I still, I still, I was right by the cell, like please. And every time they would come in, and they would, you know, <laughs> chow time. Fuck. I want nothing to eat. I want to go home. Oh, God. What was, what was the like? How old were you, Speedy? 20. Oh, oh my God. God. Look, I'm going to do you like you did poetry. Nigga, you was grown. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was 20. And crying? Up there crying? I, I never didn't even jail. cry when I went to jail. Because you was jail for liquor. Yeah, you was hung over. I thought I was gone. Didn't even count. Oh, yeah, you could have got GTA. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was gone. Oh. Because that's how the cop presented to you the whole time in the back yeah. of the car. You know you're going for a while. Oh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto. I ain't he seen you like, never uh, come uh, back uh, from that. They did me like, what you call? You know you done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no, said no. your uncle lived at 43. <laughs> Nigga, that white man came out. I went, God damn. You're like, 
don't know that nigga. I mean, I don't know him. <laughs> I said, if don't nobody come out, I can just play the show. But I ain't know I parked somewhere where you can't park at all. Yeah. So he's like, well, can I look in your car? Don't never let him look in your car. Yeah. I know that now. <laughs> Go ahead. Ain't nothing in there but the front seat. <laughs> some block punks. <laughs> long as you don't look in the front seat, I'm good. Yeah. You had some stolen radios? Yeah, two block punks. I told you. <laughs> I just guess it. I know he stole some block punks. Because like you block can punk. get, because the BMWs were really easy oh, to get yes. into. You put the screw. Did I say this? Okay. No, 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 never mind. Screwdriver in the door. I don't know the statue. You can't do it now. Over. You can't do it now. But the old uh, 320Is, 321 eyes. 321? <laughs> yeah, you put the screwdriver in the door, push down, lock pop up. Door and lock. And, and the block Damn, punts. Damn, Speedy, you really wasn't shit back then. Huh? Yeah, I was getting my hustle. And the block punts, they didn't screw them in. So you could just pull them motherfuckers right out. Pull the whole out. thing out. Because they was, they was a detachable. And how would you them. know this? Because yeah, my sister Kenta? had one. I had to take the whole thing. And I'm like, why am I taking the whole radio out? And then yeah. one time I didn't take it out. It got stolen. Yeah. In Westwood. Yeah. And she was like, why you ain't taking my motherfucking radio out? I was like, it was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I had. It was too heavy. I didn't feel like And then the, the Jettas. Cause the side, they had that side window in the front, and you put the screwdriver in there and just pop it, and stick your hand in the window, unlock it, and those and you ain't even got to this get in. This is Ben. How to break? <laughs> you ain't even got to get in a Jetta, cause you could just reach in, grab the steering wheel, right, and pull it right out. Speedy over here, like. Back to I need help with my son. <laughs> yes, hit us I don't up. Know why he fuck it up? The yeah. phone lines are three two three two nine three. Wait, did two put this number up here wrong again? Let me get my glasses I, I know what it is. 323-293-3375. How should Speedy discipline his stepchild? <laughs> 17. This ain't no four-year-old. He's 17. Um, somebody said you need to stop being a bitch and punch him in his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, you could punch him in the sternum. I mean, I, I, here's the thing. It just knocks the wind out of them. And when you knock the wind out of them, that's when you tell them everything they want to know because they think they're going to die. Well, I, I hit him with this one time. He had fucked up so bad at the house. I said, check this. Oh, no. He, nigga, you know, you know, we Brooklyn. My, okay, we, can we, can we come to it afterwards. <laughs> well, I, I do it quick. Brooklyn, my nigga. You know that, right? Yeah. You fuck. So he threw a sweater at Brooklyn and made him cry. Oh. A okay. sweater? Because Brooklyn is, looks. Wow. No, he looks up to the kid. I'm just going to keep my mom. Brooklyn go to private school. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish. So anyway, I come in the room like, say, motherfucker, don't you ever hit my motherfucking son. I, he got a little brother. He'll, they'll beat your ass. I'll get a brother. He'll beat. No, your brother. And I'll beat your daddy ass. I'm out. <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> That's you, get. you should have recorded that and used that every time. <laughs> anyway, it's the new rollout show live, live from Morris Media Studios. Bunker. The number is 323 293 Help me. 3375 yes. coming up. What? It's time to get buzzed. Again? Uh oh. We're going to jail. We have cake buzz in the house. So oh, you'll shit. be right with us. I can't eat no cake. We'll be right back. I'm trying to lose weight. Yo, we are back. DJ Twin. You doing it, man? He <laughs> got sound effects and shit. He had shit in it. Monday. No, no, he had nothing. He yeah. played that same horn on Monday. Oh, okay, cool. Right, right. I got it. He downloaded it. <clears throat> You're listening to the live rollout show right here at Morris Media. Almost. We kept a tally last time. I think he, he messed up. Malcolm. <laughs> 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 M -m 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 Do the right thing that one right there. Mouth. M -m 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 Morris. <laughs> <laughs> I can see this shit. It's just transparent. It's right there. Not only is there is a big logo Whatever. on the table. Yeah. There's cakes you know. and shit on the table. But when it when it clicks though, you gonna have it though. Yeah, when you get it, you gonna have it. <clears throat> Morris Media. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, hit us up. We still need your calls on what Speedy should do about his uh, yeah. baby's kids. Right. Somebody said sock him in the chest. Yeah, just right in the sternum to make the air. You know, when they lose, he ain't, he ain't got no meat right there. He's 17. So when you hit him, <laughs> the air is going to jump out his lungs. And that's when you tell him everything you need him to know. He was like, because he think he dying. He was like, thank you. He was like, stop feeling candy. That's the worst school. feeling to yeah. get the air knocked out exactly. of Exactly. And he think the he's the strongest person in the planet. You had that happen? Yeah. Hold his head. What the fuck did you what do? You? I'm from Oakland, no. Yeah, I'm from the Bay. Yeah. Let we me get had lucky. fights. Lucky hit you. Ladies fight. Moms did hit me. One time, I was about 13. I had my little homegirls over. We was in the kitchen. Mom said something. I was like, what? Got smart with her. She smacked me in front of everybody. I was so molded. Molded? 
<laughs> Ooh, when the last time you heard the word I molded? I heard molded in a minute. <laughs> Slapped her so hard, gave her a throwback word. <laughs> I'm molded. I was molded. I was. I was Back then, I was what molded. Happened? What happened to molded? That used to be the That used to be the shit. She molded. She yeah. molded. And everybody, you molded. <laughs> molded, corroded, but exploded. <laughs> you say that shit now. How old are you? 38? 40? 50? Yeah, you say molded. How old are you? You look great for your age. Molded. I'm going to make my kids say this shit. That um, is a great word. It is Friday, and I yeah. thought it would be a great time to have this next guest. We're going to have a new segment. We're going to have all our imaging and stuff done called Mind Your Business, and that's when we have small, you know, uh, small companies, small business owners come in and talk about their business. And it being Friday, and we want to get a buzz. Okay. Now, welcome, everybody. Sean from Cake Buzz is in the house. What's Sean up, Sean? They make special cakes with liquor. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, cake, so tell us bartender. about um, Cake Buzz and how you decided to come up with that concept. Cake Buzz uh, is uh, from my mother's initials, CB. Okay. My mother died in 2005. I took, a, I took an old pound cake recipe of hers and an old rum cake recipe of mine. The original pound cake recipe is a pound of everything, so it'll, it'll tear a mixer up. You, it's all handmade. So. Mm. I decided to kind of condense it and put the rum cake recipe with it. But I decided that, you know, rum cakes is, it just wasn't something that everybody's really doing and, and um, exciting. So I said, I'm going I'm to create a cake that's, uh, that's going to be beyond rum cake and um, it's going to be decadent. It's going to have a frosting. It's not going to be a drizzle and saturated cake with uh, a rum glaze that you put on the stove. You're going to put the rum in it. Yeah. So I went to the store to get some more rum, and I realized I could make a cake with the vodka, the brandy, the cognac, the sake, the wines. So then I went and stole a couple of the bartender's menus, and I created drinks. So I decided to put the whole drinks in the cake. <laughs> fuck the cake. <laughs> like, like, drink this, nigga. Like, fuck the glass. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> do people actually get a buzz from eating your cakes? Because I've, I've had cakes with liquor, and I just never got, you know, never felt it. Oh yeah, yeah that that one right there, that Southern situation right there. Which one is that? That, that Hennessy and butterscotch right schnapps. Oh my goodness, and, uh, it's Hennessy. Daniel, it's mate, will you get us some, yeah, uh, some plates, plates and forks. some forks it's, it's, so uh, we can it's, it's sample Hen- these? Hennessy and what? Schnapps? Butterscotch schnapps. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing about no flour, you ain't saying nothing about no eggs. Is there any cake in these? <laughs> is this is a full? Is this just frozen drinks? That's what this is. Now these, this is cake buzz. This is, okay. this is Clara Bell. I'm sharing. I'm sharing my mother's passion. I'm. I'm gonna share with you what she used to do for us as we was now, kids. And she it. put wait, wait, liquor she, yeah, in the cake. Kid? No, no, no. <laughs> Just her babies. quality of cooking. Her okay. quality oh, okay. of cooking. I thought she'd be like, I'm putting these babies to sleep. <laughs> sleep <laughs> time. Go. Thank you for the cake, Mama. I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. 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 It's working. <laughs> now you have a shirt. So you got you got apparel. Yeah. Oh, we got shirts, hats. Because yeah, I, yeah. I need a cake hey, bus. <laughs> and that's Do a nice, you, Speedy? I'm going to shirt is fly as fuck. That's, that's like a, nice, a bowling. You take that to the club. <laughs> yeah. To <laughs> church. <laughs> and I can get in free. Who you here for? I got cake. Oh, buzz. yeah. Get in. Oh, here with the catering team. Yeah, yeah bring them on in. <laughs> oh, cake buzz is the new currency. I mean, you show up with cake buzz and... All right, so what am I? What do I have in my hand? You got the banana crunch, ninety nine banana, banana liqueur, banana rum, and tres leches liqueur. See who? <laughs> yep. Thre- who? Tres leches liqueur. Oh, I thought you had a speech yeah. impediment. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> You've been drinking your cake. Well, tell us all the cakes we yeah, have we on the table today. Move we got my coffee the, out the way. We got the Georgia peaches, which has uh, Chirac, peach vodka, peach rum, peach That's brandy. This one here, that, uh, somebody, Man. can you? Um, we gonna peach whiskey. <laughs> Peach whiskey. I'm ready. Yeah, peach whiskey. No. We got the red velvet. Has zing red velvet vodka, vanilla rum, vanilla vodka. I want to try white um, chocolate liqueur. So far, oh, this is like, I want to <laughs> try that, all of them. We got that. We got that bald headed color guy right there. Oh, that has the Kahlua. One? Yep. That has the Kahlua almond tequila. Uh, Cavassier. Oh, see, that's my drink, tequila. Yeah. And it's called the bald headed. It's color called guy. the bald headed color guy. <laughs> All right. So, so let me ask you this. <laughs> so he so looked like a kid in a ever. candy store. I, I'm trying not to, but I don't want to go home drunk. But it, it seems like that's what's going to happen. But look here. So when you're doing the cake, are you 
are you, is this, are you coming up with, okay, I want to put this in, or are you taking, like you said before, other someone's other drinks, but like sex on the beach and then turn that to a cake, or is that what it is? Well, my slogans are, uh, what's your drink, let me cake it, and have your cake, and drink, and, and have your cake and drink it too. So <laughs> I'm just being creative. I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at um, drink recipes here and there. Okay, People gotcha, are gotcha. calling me saying, Sean, can you cake this, can you cake that? And I'm like, I'm the cake bartender. If you go to a bar, go to a bar or restaurant and say, let me have this drink, I can cake that. So if a kid is in your kitchen, you know, let me lick the spoon. That ain't a good like, look. You'll be like, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, get your ass out this motherfucker. I can't lick. No, you got to check the ID before they uh, yeah, yeah, lick yeah. the spoon. It's a discretionary item. I heard that. Y'all choose a cake. Right. Yeah, I, I want to take a piece. No way. I'm not going to try the ball headed color guy because <laughs> pause. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, you like ball headed color yeah, guy. Yeah, I'll be like, hey, I need to go to prison. Hey, boo. <laughs> this is that, that delicious. Really I know Pam want this ball headed. Color guy. What is this? She, I know. I tried to get Pam to go out with me the other night. The get guy the, that didn't show up the other morning showed up that night. Hey, Speedy, hand me that red velvet one up there. Why are you trying to hold it? Take it home. You know, I got this. This is good, bro. Too short the box with God. Uh, <laughs> I don't taste the liquor though. That's the kick. Oh, so I'm gonna be in the car fucked up. Yeah. What'd you have today, sir? Cake. <laughs> Two pieces. <laughs> Speedy, can I get a plate and a, a fork? My bad, man. Like, Speedy, you get this, a, you get this, an EUI um, with this butterscotch. Which what yeah, is this the butterscotch? Butterscotch, is it? butterscotch and uh, Hennessy and butterscotch schnapps, oh. and it's very moist. Yeah, I don't it's, know if a man should ever say that. Yeah, <laughs> not <good>. out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe moist. I should. Why don't you say? Can you say that, please? It's, it's very moist. Yes, it she is. She said it more masculine than you. No, this is good, bro. The this butterscotch is good. I'm going to try the red velvet now. Pam, oh, come on, oh. get the ball. Because ain't nobody fucking with the ball head, man. Come hey, on. Speedy, <laughs> your tolerance must be high as shit because I taste the alcohol in that red velvet. You weigh 105 pounds. Through that, through that. Lose some weight and get your buzz on. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Hey, this red I have velvet the butterscotch. is good. delicious. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Now, so the way I make the cakes is a lot of people they're making they're trying to do liquor cakes and they're just making a standard cake and they're kind of like brushing alcohol on the cake after it's made. Gotcha. And sometimes the frosting has no liquor in it at all. I put I put up to three fourths cup to a cup of whole liquor in a, in batches. I do small batches. Mm. So it's baked in the cake, mm-hmm. and then the frosting has the same amount. So I make a small batch of frosting, and I got just I got a cup and a half, a, about three fourths cups to a whole cup of liquor in the frosting. Now I created a reverse osmosis system where when I take there the you cake, you go trying to be, just <laughs> take the cake. You, you make cakes, nigga. You ain't a yeah. scientist, <laughs> a chemist. I, you know what I do? I now take the osmosis <laughs> and I put doses into my moses. <laughs> now you fucked up. You put a mimosa in the cake. That's all you do. Do you make mimosa cakes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what were you saying about the osmosis? Well, well <laughs> when you bake the cake, the fro- the uh, liquor is is evaporating. So, gotcha. so right as the cake is coming out the oven, there's still a large amount of liquor in it. Mm-hmm. I take it and I cover it up so that the um, liquor that's evaporating goes back into the cake. So like I'll put it in this cake container. Mm-hmm. It'll steam back up and go back into the cake and then I'll tap it and it all goes back into the cake. Hold so, on. So whatever's landing on Are you giving away it. your secret recipe? No, 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 no. This Hold is, the fuck up. No. So you tapping the plastic <laughs> and it going back in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you, you, you fucking with me right now. No, I'm it's serious. Called, it's called vic- liquor condensation. On there the you go. You liquor condensation. It, you know, so you tap it to say, get back in the cake. Yeah. <laughs> and it's say, okay, sir. So. <laughs> Ball head color guy. Say, okay, so I'll get back in the cake. <laughs> I'm in the cake now. <laughs> <laughs> you hilarious. He's like, so what I do? As the cake comes out the oven, before it evaporates, I tapped the motherfucker. <laughs> I said, get your bitch ass back in the cake. Now, when the liquor get in the cake, you fucked up. <laughs> now, the key to all of this is your timing as the liquor come out, as the cake come out the motherfucking oven. It has to be you, perfect. You have 43.1 seconds <laughs> to tap that motherfucking yeah. box to get that liquor in the cake. Exactly. Can't do it too soon. Can't do it too, too late. late. Yes. You do it too soon. Too much liquor in the cake. <laughs> then you're bad. Then you're... Do it too late. Fucked up cake. Fucked up cake. There you go. There you go. Don't tap it too hard. It's two taps. 
Anything over two taps sinks the cake. Yeah. And you don't want the cake to fall. <laughs> no, no, without, without the licking. Yes, there you go. See, we got it. That's yeah. right. We That's got it. it. This buzz. cake buzz, buzz moment has been bought to you by <laughs> Speedy. <laughs> Where can people get your cakes if they're not in Los Angeles? Can they yeah. order these? I mean, how does that work? We do ship. We ship the larger ones. Um, we're, we just opened a storefront. Excuse me, uh, 2701 Artesia Boulevard, Redondo Beach, California. Hey, this is where the white people live. Yeah. yeah. What you doing out there? Because that's why you put and it in And a lot the cake. of white people buy them cakes, don't oh, they? they? Buying them you cakes. ain't got to give them 40 ounces, you give them this cake buzz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Bring them down, brother. Fight the power. <laughs> Can you sell them after two? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they sell them. They sell them. That's beautiful. So if someone's in uh, Chicago and they're listening to the show, they, how would they get to you? They can uh, they can go to the website www.cakebuzzla.us.com. I'm sorry, and uh, you can call 310-400-4272. Tanya is we'll standing that by on. to take orders. This shit is good. You say Tanya is standing by to take orders. Tanya, <laughs> Tanya ain't got nothing else to do with take orders. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there right now. These motherfuckers ain't called. <laughs> she all can't day. even turn on the prices right or nothing. No, the phone won't ring. I won't be distracted. <laughs> and she has fun like that. It's Tanya. What you want? <laughs> Welcome to Cake Buzz. <laughs> I, want get ball, I want a ball here. Color guy. You want what? Oh, that's right. That's the Cake Buzz line. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, don't forget to tap your box when you get it. Because the fumes. <laughs> it ferments. What's your, um, your most popular cake? This shit here. Uh, that, the Southern Situation's moving pretty good and the Lemon Drop Martini. I make that with Where's me. that at? Did uh, you bring it? Well, I got over 500 flavors. I didn't want to. Oh, nigga, uh, we want 500 samples. <laughs> I wanted to taste the lemon, lemon drop martini. Lemon drop martini. It's a cold cake. It's made with limoncello, um, uh, vodka citron, and Bacardi limon. Mm. Now, what is the, uh, let's just Bacardi say this one Bacardi limon. Here. If uh, I wanted the whole cake, what does that usually mean? <laughs> the whole cakes are 120, the smalls are 15, and the mediums are 60. Oh, dollar twenty. That's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> one twenty. You got. That's service, actually got pretty good. Service. I mean, yeah, hundred and twenty. Yeah. But then the smaller ones are fifteen. Well, how big is the cake though? Oh, it's a, uh, it's pretty big. It's an angel food pound cake. weighs about five pounds. Five wow. Pounds. Five pounds of alcohol. Okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> so these are how much? Those are fifteen. Oh, that's not bad. The, the minis are fifteen, and you can you can custom make anything that you want. I mean, you oh, can so come I, by the, you can come by the store and pick of. We got a selection of probably 30, 40, 50 different flavors, and you, can you, have, you get a lot of calls like to do weddings, do the wedding cake. Yeah, we, we're doing a lot of events right now. Uh, we're doing a lot of celebrity gifting suites. We're doing a Mercedes Benz fashion show this Saturday oh, shit. Okay. in Calabasas, and we're going to be at the Rolls Royce Phantom dealership on Tuesday. You need a, somebody to carry suite. the cake in because <laughs> I'm just trying to get in the party. I'm going to drop the cake off and then I'm gonna pull off my. I'll help show. you carry me in, but it's going to be a bite missing out of all these. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe on another show I could. Uh, uh, bring back one of my tipsy sweet potato pies for you, or, oh. my, or my drunken peach cobbler or apple cobbler. Hold, hold, hold all up. of that. Hold, hold of that. up, Pippin. All of that. You make peach cobbler? Yeah, <laughs> I got a drunken peach cobbler. It's got oh everything. God, it's got Speedy everything doesn't that, drink, but he'll eat that peach cobbler. It's got the Chirac peach vodka, peach rum, peach brandy, and peach whiskey in it. Why you didn't bring that? We should have had that at last Thanksgiving. They're asking on the in the chat room your website again. The website is www.cakebuzz.la. Cakebuzz.la. And you can, can you get a shirt? Oh, I can get you a shirt. You want a hat too? It's like that. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that, that's that pimp daddy. Um, I know in '72 you was a shit because you like skin. Somebody said in the chat room you probably bake those cakes with your hat on. Sometimes I am. I am baking with with a hat on. Like I do everything with yeah. his hat on. Now, what's the weirdest uh, request as far as cake that somebody had? Like they want. Did they want an old English cake or some shit like that? No, I, no the weirdest God, thing that I'm gross. getting the weirdest thing that I'm getting right now is the bachelorette parties. They want me to make a cake as a phallic yeah. symbol. No, yeah. no, no, no. I want to hear him say it. Go ahead. Uh, you know, as a, a penis. Yeah, there you no, go. No, we don't say penis or miss. He want me to make a dick. Man. Yeah, I don't yeah. Make no dick. <laughs> he got on his church going cake buzz. Oh shirt, my so bad. He say that. <laughs> and then you got to show it with a dick. Here's yeah. the dick, ladies. So, Sean, how about this? If anybody listening orders a cake, can they get a discount if they say Roll Out Radio? Yeah, they can get a discount. Okay. 10% discount. Roll Out Radio since then. We can All do right. <laughs> if you want to give him 50? 15. Like, there it is. He's like, that's coming out your 15. shirt money. <laughs> <laughs> you went from a button down to a white girl. <laughs> 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 
Get a bandana. He you get you. Here go your cake bud scarf. That's it. Fifteen <laughs> percent. So how many dick cakes did you make? I haven't made any. Oh, what, oh you just told about? Yeah, know. no, no. I don't. I'm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because you got to figure out how you gonna shape it. <laughs> no, I mean, I you got to get your hand and go make the head a certain. <laughs> nah, bitch, you. You gotta go get the. I make a pussy. You gotta man. get the, the, the dick cake cutter. You gotta get yeah. the little cake pan and look like a penis. Then your kids come in. Well, Daddy, what the fuck out of the kitchen? <laughs> it's the number one. No, it's not. <laughs> Daddy, your dick crooked. If you don't get out this goddamn kitchen, <laughs> Mama likes it. <laughs> so the dick cake, you would you can't do anything. No. Nah, Wedding cakes, yes. Well, the the cakes that we make. Like the bigger size, the mm-hmm. cake is so rich, we don't try to tear them up because they're oh, really that's rich. Right. Yeah, yeah. But what people have been doing is instead of putting a bottle of liquor on each table, they're, they've been buying the cakes and putting the cakes on the table and then maybe buying a smaller wedding cake because they don't taste so good. Mm. Oh, yeah, wedding cakes. He like, they don't taste as good as mine. I don't know what is. Wedding cakes, they look nice. They're the nastiest shit in the fucking world. <laughs> the icing tastes like a, a sheet. Mm. Yes, they're, those and when someone like a this lady made it probably because like he said they have to make them lighter. Well, so they're, they're, they're making not... them with cheap ingredients. They make them with fondant, which is like clay sugar. Oh my god! Fondant? And you got this. Yeah, it's called fondant. It's a it's a it's a sugar that's Coat, like play doh. Like you can like, you can yeah. you can stretch oh because you can make it shapes. Yeah, yeah, you can make it shapes. And if you're if you're trying to build the cake up to to reflect something that the wedding party wants, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like. Oh, make it like our old car or our old house. Right. You know, the, I'm using all rich ingredients. I, I don't, I don't do anything like that. I don't write on the cakes. Um, I use only decorations that you can eat. Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Yeah, I guess if you're gonna make a dick cake, uh, stop, <laughs> man, man. Speedy, Speedy, he not making no dick cakes, man. It's not happening. Brother, trying to figure out how he can get this money on the side because that's some good money. Look, them help this is a whole, this, all they money go, ain't good money. They gonna eat this. <laughs> He played dominoes. He played dominoes. <laughs> and he played with old pimps. All money ain't good money, bro. All money ain't good money. All money ain't good money. You get this cake buzz money. <clears throat> now, how long you been in business? Uh, I started this in 2005 when my mother died. And uh, we just opened up a storefront uh, about two months and two weeks ago. Beautiful. So someone's uh, live in Los Angeles. It's uh, You say it's where is it? Redondo Beach, 2701 Artesia Boulevard, Redondo Beach, California. Redondo Beach, California. Right off of Inglewood and Artesia. Okay. okay. What's your well, hours? Hours are closed Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday through Friday, like eleven to eight. Oh, okay. You Depending on the crowd, if if people keep coming later, we open. Yeah, because they not only the storefront, they do special parties and events and yeah. stuff. So, so we have we got to have like because I, I would love for you to. Yeah, when we have our grand opening here at the studio, we would love for you to come by and okay. give us some cake. I bring that drunk cobbler. <clears cobbler. <clears <throat> yeah, bring that the tipsy drunk. sweet potato pie. Yeah, yeah, and that lemon. The lemon drop martini. Yeah. <laughs> That's All right, well, Sean, it. thank you for joining us this afternoon. And, and again, um, give out your website one more time. So thank you for having nice me. Nice and slow. Give it nice and slow. These black folks can't write. www.cakebuzzla.com. And if you Google Cake Buzz, I come up on like the first 10 pages anyway. I'm, I'm pretty oh, cool. I'm out there. Yeah. And okay. 15, 35% off? No, 15, I'm sorry. 15% <laughs> off if you mention the rollout show right here at Morris Media. Right. Oh, he got it right. Mm-hmm. 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 So what you guys for, for us, Feedy? All right. Uh, what I have for you is uh, my snacks and sneakers. Since we have snacks on the table, all I got to do is come up with the sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Anybody get that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you tried. It. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, KD, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, I'm sorry. Has oh, a, same thing. Kevin D. Ah, <laughs> Kevin Durant. So close. Who, who <laughs> re-signed with Nike a year ago, and it's a good thing because they have a new shoe coming out called the KD8. It's the uh, Hunt Hills Sunrise. Okay. That's the name of the shoe. That's a lot. It's a nice shoe. Yeah, that's where he grew up. uh, 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 Hills is in hills. Oh, yeah, not heels. Heels. Yeah, not like heels, like what you wear. Well, they do have those new sneakers. Black folks say heels and heel the same way. And it's a nice looking shoe. It's a low top, and I don't know why he likes wearing low tops, but, you know, I play ball. I still got a little something like that. (laughs) Anyway. And uh, this is a very, very nice shoe. If you're into uh, KDs, it's not the ones that, that. you know, you lace up to the left. I hate yeah. them. All. Oh, no, I hate it. No. It's all bad. But this what? is a very, very nice. How much it costs? 180 Too nice for me. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah 180 I don't know what it is about Nike and their shoes. They've lost their What mind. I always tell people, and especially if you're a mom and, or a single parent and your son wants these new shoes, you got to wait about two months. 
Mm-hmm. If you don't have 180, wait like two months, they go on sale, they'll drop down to like 110. Yeah. Or yeah. wait three months, go to the outlet. <laughs> get them all. Get them all. Or go online and get it from Japan. <laughs> yeah. Ain't going to fall apart. Now, the Jordan, the ball is in a different hand, but hey, it's still a Jordan. <laughs> it's like a tennis yeah. racket he got in his hand. Yeah. He got you know a football. Like, wait a minute, Jordan. Yeah. So it was a very nice shoe. Uh, I'm into sneakers. Yeah. But if you got 180 with, with taxes, that's 200. Yeah. You got to wait in line? No, not for these. Okay, good. Not for these. The, the ones you usually have to wait in line are when the Jordan releases an yeah. uh, old shoe. Yeah, that's why I can't. And they don't even do that anymore. They got Apparently, it. you haven't been to Foot Locker. I haven't. Because no, now you go to Foot Locker and you get a number. A number? Yeah, you pay okay. for the shoe, you get a number. If they call your ne- number, the shoe is yours. Wait a minute. You said you pay for the shoes. You got to pay for the shoe right number. there. You get, so if get, I don't get a call. Get your money back. Okay. But Make you have sure. to already pay for the shoe. Why do all that for some damn sneakers? Because I just don't uh, understand a young that. kids were getting killed or so that's shot. That's all the more cities. reason why not to support that. Yeah. I don't do it. I, ain't, I used to, back in the day when my sons, they're 30 something now. Buying $200 were, shoes and they don't have proper books and shit to go to school yeah, with. It's exactly. just our because priorities kids, are so messed up. I need up. to look like. Yeah, you need to look I like gotta, them something. You got to look like something. That's why I wear ponies. They want to look smart. Hey, I wear, I got my chucks on. Hey, they classics. They, everybody's been wearing chucks for what, 30, 40? You can't, you yeah, can't ball no chucks, though. You can't ball. <coughs> you can't ball I don't know how they did it back nah. in the day, but you can't do it. But they're buck 80. Uh, a little bit expensive for me. I think it's But the nice people are buy, that are buying these shoes, are they balling? No. No. Oh. <laughs> not at all. Okay, at all. you can't ball in those shoes. You ball in your old shoes. You don't ball yeah, you, in the new take, ones. And oh. sometimes these new shoes. That I was watching some show, and uh, my man he had, is in Vegas, and he was selling all his shoes. He had a collection of five thousand pair of shoes. Wow. And and he only some wore them once. Some he never wore. Wow. And he was selling. They were like five thousand dollars shoes, and he was trying to sell the whole collection for a meal. Million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, tax problems. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to find a way to find a million dollars. What's your, do you have sneakers? You wear sneakers uh, while you cooking, or no? I, I no. I usually wear um, like these um, comfortable kind yeah. of like Dr. Timberland Scholes. boots. He got on crocodiles like, right now. He got, well, he <laughs> got on saw the hat like yeah. Timberland boots. He's, he's seventy two. Where yeah. you born and raised? I'm I'm fifty. I'm sixty five. Born in sixty five. I about to say he named two numbers. I'm fifty. I'm sixty five. <laughs> I'm thirty five. If you yeah. look at that, <laughs> you got him nervous. Whatever you are. No, I'm like, <laughs> no you from L.A. Yeah. What high school? Uh, I went to Grant High School, and I went to Lenox first. Then I went to Grant High. No, school. you didn't. I went to Lenox. You're older than him, Speedy. Hold on, hold on. At when least went to Lenox. Seven went to years. Lenox in seventy nine. I graduated seventy nine. Yeah, you oh, might, you might know my brother's name. <clears throat> Who's your brother? Uh, they yeah. Johnny and Shot. They used to play on the football team. What the fuck? Just got real. <laughs> Kenneth Price, man. Was, was real with Kenneth, yeah. Kenneth Price, man. The Price is- now, Kenneth Price, you're going to hate this. <laughs> this dude played on the basketball team, but Price would not take a shower. He didn't take a shower the whole four years of high school. So we used to put Tide and, and soap in his locker. And then, you know, after the game, everybody taking a shower. Like, kid, where you going? Oh, man, I got something to do. No, nigga. He, he'd be funky as fuck. So... 12th year, 12th grade, time to graduate. So what they decided to do that year was let everyone graduate, and uh, <laughs> and they hand you the slip. But inside your slip, it'll tell you to go to the uh, cafeteria to get your diploma because they wanted everybody to walk. Mm-hmm. So Kenneth, and we all, me and the homies, we all standing by there. We got mm-hmm. our diplomas. And Kenneth tries to walk by. We're like, well, you ain't come to get your diploma. I already been in. No. <laughs> no, you haven't, motherfucker. You didn't graduate. It's it would have smelled good. you. But yeah, Kenneth I'm Price. surprised you did, sweet. Whoa. <laughs> Shots fired. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, more, it's the rollout show on Morris Media Live. The phone lines are open 323-293-3375. And we will be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. And get you a cake, bitch. Yeah. Yo, we are back. It's the Rollout Show live at Morris Media in the bunker. We're in a bunker. These ain't even curtains. These are shower curtains. It's real. I said this would be a cool place if you had to hide for the purge. Yeah, you can make it. Yeah. Just, just I finally watched that. Bring in a bunch That's, of food. That was a good movie. I, I just hate because you know we you know yeah. movies. You go, somebody going to want to go out. Somebody, yeah. Nigga, just stay in the house. Why you got to leave? Just stay in the house. Just stay in the fuck. 
I got to go see James. And I, I love be him. chasing somebody. Like, I'll be right back. Go on in. That's on you. Lock these doors. Dude. That's what I need for my stepson. Purge. You do. Send him. <laughs> why don't you go get some candy? Purge <laughs> badass kids. <laughs> why you put this orange vest on me, daddy? <laughs> It's time to be purged. <laughs> Some of you motherfuckers don't need to be with us. The number to call into is uh, 323-293-3375. Write it down. Do whatever you got to do. That's the number to call into if you want to talk to us. Yeah. Who we be having in the room? Well, we have the beautiful Alicia. Mm-hmm. That's right. Joy Powell. She's an actress. I saw you Singer, up. screenwriter, director, producer, oh, and stand-up comedian. What do you do stand-up? Listen. Okay. Oh. Where? Did she say listen? She said with the mama voice. Listen. Okay, you do it. <laughs> How you Alicia doing? has also Alicia. played um, on Excuse Me for Living, or she just finished. Uh, let me put my glasses on. Yeah, like you trying to wear glasses on, girl. Put I, it can, on I can't see. So you can see up close. She played. Uh, well, she has credits such as Desperate Housewives, a recurring role on Everybody Hates Chris. I love that show. Scrubs, NYPD Blue, and The Shield. Mm. Yeah. Damn, you, yeah. you, you working. be working. 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 A little bit. A little bit. She, she the lady in a the pen that go, everybody get down. That's her. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> you in the union? That's some good That's money. That's good shit. Yeah. At least they get down. Check That's it. what I'm saying. Uh-huh. When I say it, they get down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Speedy. Oh, uh-uh. shoot, Speedy. You finna get down Sam. in a minute, Speedy. <laughs> now let this cake get you done now. <laughs> <laughs> you the one had the cake. I didn't. I'm, uh-huh. That's what I'm, I'm blaming fully on. aware of all my faculties. <laughs> uh-uh. now, you would be in trouble. Out of all the things she named, which one do you like doing most? Directing, acting? You know what? Um, I like them all for different reasons. I'm, I'm directing, and I started teaching. Oh, okay. Um, because of my communication with actors, I found that I communicate really well with actors. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started teaching. Um, what age are you, or all ages? Actually, all ages. Oh, okay. All ages. I'm I'm really good with kids, and I'm great with adults too. Yes. <laughs> now most problems for actors, especially comics, is cold reads. H- yeah. How do you can you explain to people out there who's wanting to come to LA? Yes. And one of the hardest things to do is a cold read. First, explain what a cold read is and how, how can you help them through it. You know, um, cold reading is basically um, looking at the dialogue for the first time mm-hmm. and making it come to life. Mm-hmm. Um, Different actors, I notice, have different techniques, how they do that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they have to read it without any feeling at all. I don't get that. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, it, it seems very spiritual to me mm-hmm. because the characters jump out at me. Mm-hmm. So I have to give them what they're asking for. Okay. So, I mean, to me, that's what you should do. Just go for it. Yeah. Whatever the character is asking you for, then you need to give it. Okay. Yeah. You need to give it. My first cold read was pretty bad. Oh God! I Your last cold read, I read. Every, I read everything on the paper. First, you need to know how to read. That might be helpful. No, I, I, I read shots it. fired. I'm not saying that you. I no, mean, but I've no, been but in. You're right, though. I've been in some casting rooms, yeah. and like I remember one. Um, no names. No names. Fuck that. Say the name. One casting <laughs> office. For some reason, they had like a one inch thick door. Okay. And you heard everything on the inside, and I was like. These people work though. They can't read. Like, how do you get a job? Yes. I didn't understand. Yes. You know what I'm Speedy, how did you make it? There, right? This, yeah. You see these people all the time at the auditions, yeah. and one day you just slip over and hear their audition. You'd be like, really? <laughs> like, you well, know somebody. You know I, somebody. I didn't know. Like I said, I was first in the game. My first read I went to was in Hollywood, and I literally read everything. Like the stage <laughs> did you use your fingers as, as he cried and tears came down my eyes. <laughs> And the man went, all right. <laughs> and I went, yeah, cool. And that was the first time I heard someone go, so we'll call you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. Great. Got this shit. Hey, yeah. stop it. I got that. I was standing by the phone for a week. That's hilarious. Now, me, I've known Alicia for years. We go we, back. We go back to Faithful Central in Inglewood. New Faith for Central. Yeah. Faithful Central. Faithful Central. FCBC. FCBC. New Faith We used to tear it up. Tear it up. At church? We, oh, we used oh, to tear yeah. it up. Y'all was fun? Oh, we <laughs> used to. No, we used to oh, break down not, the walls. Not us two, but us. Uh. Yeah, not, not together. Not together, but it was. In the cloakroom. Not in the cloakroom, but, you know, we. we was some foolishness. We going did on. some stuff over there. We, we, we. I'm, they still remember us, yes. right? Yeah, we, 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 we set the bar pretty high. Yes. And then she. You are in New York now. Y'all got to tell us how y'all was tearing it up. We At just. Church. Okay, first. 
first, you there was it. this play, Phaedra, Phaedra Harris. Oh I my know gosh. Phaedra very well. A- amazing casting director yes, and writer. Well. She wrote this play called Let's Be Real. Yeah, and when yeah. I tell you it was real, it was about relationships. Mm-hmm. And we separated the audiences, guys on one side, girls on the other side. And what came out of that was just ridiculousness. It, it was, was at church. Yeah, yeah church. it was like a mono, It was a, a collage of monologues and scenes. Mm-hmm. And it was like a battle against the sexes. Mm. Oh, Phaedra really did was hey, let me talk to you about it. we go in there and be like man my girl tripping and she would write it down or they come in and be like my god i don't know nothing she write it down and we came in one day she was like let's be like wait a minute this looks like my baby mama <laughs> this looks vaguely familiar <laughs> His Yo, name is I'm Kevin. <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> Kevin Trump. Right in my life, you were fucked up. Yeah, I can't say, but Kevin. Exactly, yes. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin A with an accent at the end. Like, wait a minute. Now, where do you do your acting classes? I, I'm in Brooklyn. I remember. Oh, you in New York? Yeah, I've been I've been in New York for the last what nine years now. Nice. How you like? Yeah. It? Well, Mysteries of Laura is there. Yeah, where that's I the play new... Nanny Alicia. Yeah, she's on, on NBC. That's the new Wednesday NBC. nights, eight o'clock before Law and hey, Order. There it is. Wow. I'm just saying. It got picked up for a second season. Oh yes, it did, right, baby. It oh yes, it Praise did. Praise Jesus. Yes. So how long are you in LA? Are you just visiting, or you came to see us? No. I'm to say you came to see us. Let's try it again. It's really a sad thing, the reason why I'm here. Oh, okay. um, this is home for me. I mean, all my family is still here. But um, my cousin was murdered. Oh, sorry. Mm. To hear that. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about the elderly gentleman in Inglewood that got killed. That was my cousin. And so I came for the funeral. And then um, I was supposed to get my hair done. And my hairstylist came to my house and let out my dog, who is about this high running through the streets and so my mother jumped in her car and went to get the dog and fell in the middle of the street and broke her hip oh Boy, my god I thought, she, uh, I thought she was in the car how'd she fall in the middle of the street she jumped the out the car to go get him she gonna tackle the dog like yes, a rodeo lady yes yeah, she, w- she went in full fledged and, and hit the cement and oh. Broke her hip, so I've been oh, taking wow. care of her. So it's That's been like cool. at least you can take care of your mom. That's yeah. I think, uh, well, I was a nurse for twenty years. Oh yes, you, you know, know I've been having this back problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can work that out. Baby. I just need full prescription pads. So at least, <laughs> Alicia, you're um, you're currently also doing a one woman show called uh, Different Shades of Love. Can yes. you tell us about that? Oh my gosh, um, it's uh, monologues and um, scenes and poetry, poetry that I wrote, um, everything I wrote. Mm -hmm. Um, And it has about eight characters. It starts off with me as a little girl. um, And it talks about different situations of love, how I fell in love with my dad, um, relationships between mothers and daughters, how I fell in love with the arts. Um, There's an old lady character, Miss Johnson, um, who talks about love of community and the special relationship she had with her husband. Um, there's this one guy character I have in there who fell in love with a girl at um, church because she had a big booty. But uh, found, yeah. Kent, is his name Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, this sounds my baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> my life too. <laughs> so who fell in love with you at the church? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's get down to the nitty. Anyway, but uh, he found out that she was a little bit more than that, and they end up getting married. I mean, you know, just all different kind of characters. It's okay. it's real fun. Now, and where you, could people okay. see this? I'm I'm in Brooklyn. Oh, um, it's, it's we're a, putting. I'm developing it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still in development. Okay. But now they can see you on TV. Yes, NBC. Did I say it? NBC. You said it. That's good. Wednesday money. nights, eight yeah. o'clock. What's the name of the show? Mysteries of Laura with Deborah Messing and Laz Alonzo. Laz Alonzo. Laz Alonzo. Yeah, I, I, I've been knowing Laz since we was BT, and he was yes. trying to get into the acting thing. And he's had the one show he did have that was on. Uh, one of the cable channels, the uh, when he was chasing, well, he was taking criminals and helping them help. They were helping him solve cases and catch other criminals. They were, oh, yeah, they were yeah, in yeah, jail. Yeah. Which yeah. one was that? Was, I forgot the name of it, like but TNT. it was a great show. Yeah, it, it, it did very well. And then he went to this other show that didn't do well. I thought the one that he did with Megan Good was pretty decent. That yeah. was the one. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't mm-hmm. last. Uh, was it on CB? I think it. I think it because a competition. No, it wasn't a competition. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't a competition. But, but, but Laz is a very good actor. Very he's good. an amazing he an, he an amazing yeah. person. Yeah, he's, he's, good, he's an amazing person too. I, actually, the whole cast has been pretty amazing. I now, mean, are you one of the regulars on there? Or what is your character? We're working it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happened was is that um, I booked the pilot. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and <laughs> I did my thing. Um, That's what she said. Yeah, yeah I did my th- I mean, you know, they wanted, the, basically in the audition, I okay. did this rant. And when I got to the set, the director said, you know, I loved your audition tape. And I said, so is that what we're doing? Because really it was two words. <laughs> I worked two words out. Okay. Um, he said, yeah, that's what we're doing. So I started from the time I saw the kids on the bridge, they were peeing on each other Uh and ranted all the way down to the end of the bridge. Um, like you know, that's some nasty ass shit. The, 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 you got okay. the you got the white kids peeing on each other. You know they need a quarter bill because I whooped their ass at, all the way down to the end Hilarious. of the bridge. So they called my agent back uh-huh. and said that they wanted me. They didn't know where or what. And I said, you know, well, tell them the kids don't have a nanny. And that's kind of how it started. Oh, nice. cool. you made your own character. Look yeah, they created a character for me and brought me on. So, so if people want to pass, check out your past work, where do they go? Um, I am all over the place. Um, you know, you can Google it and you know, IMDb it or you know, under uh, Alicia Joy Powell, A L Y S I A Joy Powell. You know, like cool and, and it says here that you also have a jewelry line. I do. I make jewelry. I made these babies. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Did you make us some shit? You know, because the cake dude came and bought cake. You can't <laughs> make jewelry and don't come with just two. Well, pieces. you know, since I did come under, you know, um, uh, you know, other circumstances, oh, okay. I could come through again, and yeah, you know, need, need a nice little chain with some diamonds in it, <laughs> or diamonds, whichever one. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about you. I'm really concerned okay. about you. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I make cufflinks. Okay. For guys, you make Rolex. With Speedy don't you wear cufflinks. You make Rolexes? I mean, no, no. But Lenny on uh, Crenshaw, yeah, he yeah. got a couple. I know you can't put. It I in saw the seat. him. He passed me about three times. You just showed your age. You said Lenny. Motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> well, know that's a good time. Yeah. I let me have plenty of the mini. If you ain't got any, I let me have plenty. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Lenny was stereotypic. But yes, funny as yes, fuck. yes, because he was smooth. Wasn't he smooth? Yeah. <laughs> my name is Lenny, and I have plenty. Where could people find your jewelry? Um, my Diva Tude is the name of my jewelry line, and I have an Etsy shop. Um, and what kind and of I, shop? Etsy. Etsy. Yeah, and I also have a business page on Facebook. Okay, what's what is it? Uh, Alicia Joy Powell or my Diva Tude. My diva two, yes, like attitude. yes, a two, a two to fit your inner diva. All right, so I don't need slogan. nothing to fit in yeah. my inner diva. At that point, <laughs> mm, you have an inner diva, especially no tube. <laughs> <laughs> don't need God. no tube. Yeah, gerbils are out. Oh, oh they don't go okay. crazy. That's not a gerbil. That's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Gerbil's big. Without a tail. Shit. Without a tail. <laughs> Where's my chihuahua? Oh, I'm sorry. And do you still do stand up? Uh... I I do hosting. I do host oh, okay. a lot. I'm usually um, called... in New York. Yes. 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 I got a lot of funny comedians. Well, man, so York. next time we come to New York, we got to hang out. Yeah, yeah. Do that. I just saw my boy Chris Spencer yeah. at the ABFF. He did his thing. He was hot. Chris is definitely doing it. I love the uh, real house husbands of uh, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That's hysterical. You like it? I love it. Yeah. It's It's funny. funny. It's pretty funny. So my (laughs) dilemma for the day was uh, my stepson is fucking up. Do you have kids, Alicia? I don't, but I'm good with kids. So what should I do? Please give Speedy some advice. Put him in the corner and make him hold out his arms like that. You don't see the... Um, 17, though. Hey, it still works. <laughs> nah, my stepfather work. used to punish us it like that. It still works. He would make us stand up against the wall, face to the wall, on our tippy toes, with that, the hands up. That's why your calves is and if you And if you come down, he would hit you with the belt. What got you? Yeah. in the Marines or something like that? That's not like No, Marines, but it was sorry. like... It was like that. So you stand there on your tippy, tippy toes, toes with your hands all so the, the way up. the first five minutes, you're good. Yeah. Then you, your calves start, start wavering. And then your daddy's behind you with the belt <laughs> yeah. the whole time. He just stand there waiting too. Like, see, That's come gangster. They, That's you know, gangster. Almost touching the floor. That's <laughs> gangster. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's something you invite your friends over for. Mm-hmm. Has a popcorn. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> stand there, nigga. You go stand right there. Now my dad didn't do that. You selling dad, tickets to this event? My dad didn't do none of that shit. He just he if he bit his bottom lip, <laughs> nigga, that's your. 
ass. <laughs> and then he grabbed my dad would grab his belt and he pulled his belt off like a superhero. Yeah. And it just like kashoom. It come right like Pootie Tang. Yeah, it come right out. <laughs> and he wrap it twice around his hand, you like Ooh. Oh, it's on. Yeah. It is so on. My and I I got in trouble and my dad tripped me one time. He said, Go in the room, take your clothes off. Take what off? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the worst one. That's an Adrian my Peterson. Right he ain't there. never said that shit. I, I really fucked up. I don't know what the fuck I did. And he said, "Take clothes." I said, "Take." Oh no, I can't take my clothes off. <laughs> so I decided because we had a pretty pretty big house. So I decided. I said, "I'm gonna let him hit me, and then I'm gonna act like he hurt me, and I'm gonna run." So as soon as he hit my arm, I went, "Oh goddamn!" I think I think he broke it. It's broke. <laughs> I think it's broke. So, but I'm still walking, but I'm saying my arm broke. And my dad went, Is the boy all right? And so as soon as he said, the boy all right, I said, I got him, I got him. I was, I was like, he's broke. My mother went, That boy ain't hurt down, right? Beat his ass. <laughs> and I wanted to say to him, I'm like, You bitch, get your ass out the way. He had a cheerleading section. That's yeah. not nice. So, so I'm going around the house. I'm going, Daddy, I think he broke my arm. He said, Boy, who's With the belt, Speedy. I had to do something. I ain't want to get no whooping. Hey, all I know is. Growing up, your parents' belts was the longest belt yes. in history. I ain't seen no belt at Ross or Marshall's that long. And they bought this wide. Yeah, they be that wide. They wrap around seven times. They still got six feet of cord. Like, what kind of Zorro the gay blade for And my daddy was small, so he had he couldn't have had more than about twenty nine inch waist. Wow. He had three belts on. My daddy was five, my daddy was about as tall as James Brown. He's about five seven. Nine. Oh yeah. Wow. But when I was little, he was tall as fuck. Yeah. Right. But as I got older, yeah. Stop he, puffing up your chest. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, because he's I still with your ass. I used to collect dolls and stuffed animals. So whenever, you know, the announcement would come, I would go to my room and collect all my stuffed animals and have to be like doing this, <laughs> like oh, blocking. The with the yeah, dog. Blocking the them. dog, like, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I didn't do shit. I just peed on myself. That's all I did. They grab one, snatch that one. I catch it in the one, just, you know. Okay, so we, we, threw a, we threw a question out earlier because Speedy has a 17 year old um, stepson mm. that's been getting into like little minor trouble uh, shoplifting, etc. But, but it's escalating. Okay. And, and, and Speedy uh, says he can't put hands on him, so he's just because he's a step. Uh, mm. Yeah, and so he wants. He's asking uh, our listeners, what should he do to discipline him? Have you had like a real talk with him? I did I mean, that like, last night. I yeah, said, I, just I, have I, like a real I like, like. I felt like one of them shows. I was like, yeah. man, tell me how to tell me how to help you help you. Yes. I did that. I said, no, seriously, man, tell me exactly what is the problem. Because it can't be the house is fucked up. It ain't none of that. Right. Everything, light come on. You got a cake, you got a video game in your yeah. room. Food, your refrigerator is food there. I said, it may not be the shit you want to eat, but it's some food in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ham hog, chilling. <laughs> hog head cheese. Hog head cheese, but there's some food in the motherfucker. <laughs> you be creative, you can eat that shit. So I did that last night, and he just sat there, and I said, no, no, man, you can really tell me. what the, What's going on? Nothing. So nothing. Yeah. I said, so what did you take? Candy. Said, who takes candy from Walmart? Who's who is he hanging with? It's a Mexican dude. Oh, it's it's who he's hanging and with. And they both got got. Yeah, it, it's and I told his mom that it's who he's hanging with. Yeah. You know, he's he's he at that stage he, like, where just flow with you dude. know bra- bravado is starting to yeah. you know kick in. He's trying to find himself and you know where he fits in between his peers and what y'all told him. He's so, gonna find himself in prison in a minute. I told him that. So, but that's the thing, playing you, that game. You, he's they too said old. Hit him. They said hit him. I can't. I don't think I can. I said punch I him in the sternum. That's not hitting. That's different. <laughs> It's just knocking a little wind out of him. It's just knocking a little wind out. Not, don't leave a mark or nothing. It's right here. Now okay. I got now, <laughs> now I gotta lock my motherfucking door every night. <laughs> what I don't I told him what I don't want to happen is be on forensic files. <laughs> hey, here's the In blood trail plot. right here. It goes back to the other room. In their plot. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't need to put a lock. Just put that 7 Eleven ding dong when it come in your room. <laughs> like, hey nigga. <laughs> Slurpees on your left. Ding dong, hey nigga. That's all you need. That is. Slurpees you ever on go, the left. You ever go at 7 Eleven? That's what they sound like, isn't it? Hey nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. came to get some chips. Oh, you doing on the Slurpee? Left. No. Yeah. Or oh you go God. to the. You, have, you know they charge 50 cents for ice? Yeah, Are you then you can't just get ice no more. Nigga, we- I went in with my, my big cup. Yeah. I said, I get some ice. 50 cents. For ice? <laughs> I said, I'm just putting ice in. 50 cents. 
Wow. Like I got my own cup. No matter. I just went over there and pushed the button on the ice, but let it all fall down. I don't want no ice. I'm just see. Make sure can't nobody else get none. Motherfucker. How about that? You just leave with the ice on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Now that's fifty cents on the ground. You can find it. Well, you're listening to the all new rollout show live from Morris Media Studios, and we'd like to thank our guests, Alicia, thank you, thank you, Alicia. Joy Ooh, Powell. Where thank can you people for follow me. you? How can they follow you? Um, I am on Facebook, Alicia Joy Powell, and on Twitter, Alicia Joy Powell. You got a man? Um, we can work it out. All right. Oh, right. what you got? I'm glad somebody ain't watching right now. <laughs> Somebody gonna get in trouble when they get home. <laughs> you was flirting way too hard at that show. You got to leave your joy, pal. I thought you was white. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> uh, let's go to break. All right, cool. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Hit us up, 323-293-3375. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> I want to see her body. Yo, we are back. I don't hear shit, but we are back. I don't hear nothing. Can you? Toop, we don't hear nothing. I don't. We don't hear nothing. All right, fuck it. If you hear, that's all that matter. Uh, it's, the, it's the rollout show live. No, it doesn't. BB. We got to hear ourselves. Yeah. It's live. Yeah, we live. We live. Yeah. Live radio. Let's Hit the other button. The one that ain't on. <laughs> Whichever one is in the off position, hit that one. Hit that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this one. There you go. Just click that. Falling under the table. Yeah. <laughs> wretch around and wretch it off. See if a plug yeah. is just hanging out there somewhere. Watch Poe go find it, too. Bam. Find it quick. You leaned on this the button right button here. you've been hitting all day. Hello. Hey. The boxes are unplugged. The boxes are Oh, we're on. You can hear it now? No, I'm just answering. We are? No, I'm, I'm plugged in. I don't hear nothing. Like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I don't hear no music or anything. Yeah. Yeah, because the there it is. headphone All right. boxes. Yeah, there we go. We are on. Apparently, somebody kicked the motherfucking box. Shout out to the power strip. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you in the hood. Exactly. All of them plugged into one outlet. <laughs> the watch, whole studio went out. Watch that power saying. strip right there. Go outside and turn your car on and plug it up. To- <laughs> it's the Rollout Show live at Morris Media. We're live in the bunker. It's your boy Speedy in the building we have. Poetess. In the building we have. Kente Scott representing that. Yay! And we have a special guest in the building with us. His name is Michael Dauphin. He is the eldest son of John Dauphin, a musical legend here in Los Angeles. Um, He is the eldest son of five children of music entrepreneur. I'm not going (laughs) to tackle that word, but visionary John Dauphin. He is also the owner, creator of the Dauphins of Hollywood. Please welcome Mr. Michael Dauphin. Good to have you with us, man. Thank you. I hope I didn't screw up that intro too bad. (laughs) Explain, please. I'm born and raised here in Los Angeles, so and and they told me a little bit about you. Before Motown, there was Dolphins of Hollywood. Mm. Wow. That says the whole thing in the story. Of course, that was a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, My father came here from Detroit in 1947 Mm -hmm. and came with this vision about opening this music empire. And... In Los Angeles, the first thing he did when he when he got here was look for some property mm-hmm. in Hollywood because he already knew what he wanted to do, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't rent to him. Yeah, folks, a lot of folks don't know that Los Angeles was officially segregated. Oh yeah, no, I didn't know until 1956. Wow. You couldn't live off Crenshaw; it was out of the hood. Mm-hmm. Crenshaw did not belong to us. You cannot move over this far because mm-hmm. there were laws on the books that said you could not buy property. Wow. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. So with, uh, we were like on Central, was it? 
Central uh, Avenue, Central, yeah, Central all Avenue. around Central was where <clears throat> everything was happening for black folks. Mm -hmm. And I mean everything was happening for black folks. And, you know, the big thing about it, we may talk to some folks and say, I don't know that, I don't know that. But it wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about 100 years. We're talking about 55 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the most, yeah. And, and places like Jefferson High School, we had Jesse Belvin, the Olympics, the Colsters, Dexter Gordon, mm. Buddy Collette, Charles Mingus, Dorothy Dandridge. Alvin Ailey came from Jefferson High School and wow. Dr. Ralph Bunch mm. out of our wow. neighborhood. Yeah. Mm. And my so, dad opened this place. So it was a record label or? We had four record labels, mm -hmm. oh. uh, the record shop mm -hmm. and a recording studio. And my dad innovated this piece about broadcasting out of the front window. Wow. Names that some folks would recognize. Like on uh, Do the Right Thing, how they had the yeah, DJ out. Exactly. Right. In, yeah, broadcast in out, of, out of the front window. Uh, DJs that became legendary in Los Angeles. Huggy Boy, Hunter Hancock, mm -hmm. um, a, a couple of other folks are around that time. It was a happening time for Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem that happened for my dad back in those days was white folks wanted to come over to Central and burn it. <laughs> mm. And Sheriff, the, the police chief, Parker, didn't want that to happen. Wow. He came over, shut us down a couple, shut us. I mean, I was only yeah. seven years old then. But shut us down a couple of times because there's too many white kids in the store. Mm. Mm. To buying records and listening to To buying to, records yeah. and listening to black music. Mm. Right. You were seven. You was working security. <laughs> <laughs> My mama said back up. <laughs> now you're working on a John Dolphin story. Can you tell us about that? And there is my, my, my nephew, Jamel, wanted to start this family project. He wanted to write the book. He mm -hmm. said he wanted to know his grandfather. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book. And, you know, with the help of the family and a number of other people we brought in and so on and, and published the book. And that started off as a family thing. And then folks started reading the book. We had to publish more copies, publish more copies, publish more copies. Then the phone rang one day and said, are you ready to do a stage play? Wow. 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 And it just took off from there. We have, uh, it's, it's showing now at the Hudson Theater, right off of Santa Monica and Vine. Mm -hmm. We've had over 36 sold out shows That's every amazing. single show. Wow, and nice. And so the play goes from the start of it until? It goes from my father came to came to L.A., came to Central Avenue, up to the time of his death. Wow. And, and it, they're, uh, they're singing it, in the play? and all Oh, the there's, they're singing in the play like you would not believe. So now we were just talking about Central Avenue. Um, how did um, the Dauphin brand um, play into Central Avenue and the influence they had on that whole artistic era? Well, it influenced, and it was at a time when things were starting to change. Some things were moving up the ladder. A few years later, they started going down. And when my dad opened, it was primarily around jazz, mm -hmm. around jazz and jump blues. I mean, Charles Mingus did his very first recording in my dad's studio. You said jump blues? Jump blues. Jump blues, okay. Jump blues, which was, um, it, it was kind of that, that, that big band but small group sound mm -hmm. and dance and music. Okay. There, there's almost nothing about jump blues that, won't, that, that you cannot tap your toe to. Wow. I guarantee you it will, it will get your toe tapping, mm -hmm. folks like Louis Jordan and some of the others. And then around 53, 54 is when rhythm and blues in Los Angeles started to take off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had the Coasters, we had the Olympics, we had Jesse Belvin, uh, Sam Cooke was just figuring this thing out. Mm -hmm. Ray Charles is still trying to figure out who he was going to be. Mm -hmm. He was singing, but he was sounding like old Nat King Cole or, or Charles Brown. Mm -hmm. But the rhythm and blues was starting to go up, so my dad kind of switched reels and started rolling with that and the doo-wop groups uh, here in Los Angeles. It was just an amazing time. You said he was... Um he had this dream before Motown was created because Detroit and... He came here from Detroit. Mm -hmm. wow. So knew, did he know Barry he, Gordy? He knew Barry Gordy. Wow. Wow. He knew okay. Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy was out here a couple of times to talk to him about, you know, what he was doing. That, I mean, that had to take a lot of will to just say, I'm going to up and move to Hollywood and start all these things, a record company, a record store. I mean, for that time, that was a pretty big task. It was a huge task. It, it was a huge task. And, it uh, seems like your dad might be unsung because I'm not really familiar with the Dolphin family. My dad was murdered in, in when I was nine mm. uh, by a songwriter. Mm. Mm. 
wow. Over over money. Some of the same things that we hear today. Mm. You know I mean? and, and in many ways, the business has not changed much over mm-hmm. the years. Yeah, pretty much. They just find other ways. Mm-hmm. One of the things that my dad's business was that, one, he always advised his musicians and his writers, own your publisher rights. Don't ever give up your publisher rights because mm-hmm. that's your money forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just because somebody waves something that you write now, don't take it. Right. You know, rather than take a few thousand dollars now, let it build for later in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. And don't let anybody else take control. One of the things, just, just as one quick example, he always felt that, that distributors were working for the other side of the equation. Mm-hmm. So even if he pressed records gave the distributors, they might not ever get out of the distributor's warehouse. Mm-hmm. Right. So he pressed records, put them in the back of the car, and delivered them to record stores himself. Wow. Mm. I mean, the man didn't sleep much at all. <laughs> wow. What, who were some of the legendary artists that might have been on his label at that time? Don Julian and the Larks, uh, another group called Moon and Mars that were back in those days. Mm-hmm. We did uh, Betty Swan, uh, did a very popular tune in those days called Baby I'm Yours, or Make Me Yours, I'm sorry. Baby, baby, baby. Okay. Now, um, did your dad make a pretty good living doing he Dolphin made a pretty Records? Good, he made a really good living. Okay. He made a really good living, and for a black man to be doing that. But the big thing for him, music was his tool, was his product. Mm-hmm. Was he, he always, a musician as well? No. no oh, wow. Not at all. Okay. He had good ears. That's mm-hmm. one thing he passed me, he mm-hmm. had good ears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in his view, it's all about the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Music was just the product. Mm-hmm. The, the, the approach to running the company and looking to expand the company was all about business, looking at your product. Where can it go? You know, how do you, you maximize your project? How to get it out? Question for you. There's a lot of young, talented young people out there listening to the show. What advice would you give to them, being that you say it's pretty much the same, but what advice would you give to, to them today? Is it the same thing? It, it is exactly the same thing. Do never give up your publishing rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons we get ballers out there so much is because the record company, the record companies, a lot of record companies, they wave the money in your face and you take the money mm-hmm. and you sign away your rights and you find out when that money's gone, there's no more coming. Yeah. yeah. After you buy those Bentleys and a couple of Maybox, and that kind of, there's no more money to follow that up because you signed away your publishing rights. Just a lot of the things that, that, that will guarantee you a lifetime, mm-hmm. a, a lifetime of income. Mm-hmm. Do you know that even the song uh, Happy Birthday belongs to somebody? And you still get wow. paid. And you have and to pay to yeah. you yeah. sing Can't that sing song on television yeah. and all that stuff. You have yeah. to pay to sing it in a restaurant. That's why a lot of restaurants, you know, they pay an annual license fee. Wow. That gives it permission to use songs that are, are part of ASCAP or BMI. Mm-hmm. But that's why a lot of restaurants don't say happy birthday anymore. Wow. Because mm. somebody gets a check no matter what happens, whether you're here to the, in a restaurant, in the elevator, at the car wash, on the radio. Yeah. Somebody gets a check every time mm-hmm. that song gets played. So don't give away. Anybody. Don't wave nothing. Don't wave nothing. Yeah. yeah. Own your publishing rights. I mean, you that, that lifetime of income is going to be a whole lot better than that quick get gone. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, Sam Cooke, and uh, he was murdered off of Figueroa. Exactly. Yeah. At a motel. Exactly. Dunbar? No. I forgot the name of it, but... No, it was that's on small, Central, right? That Dunbar is right on Central Avenue, right. which is a whole other story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, supposedly, the lady thought, or the, whoever shot him thought he was a burglar or some, something like that. He got shot in the back. Chasing a prostitute down the street. Yeah. They stole his money, right? She, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stole his money in his pants. Mm. Well, so he's walking, he's running, running down the street. Butt naked. And now, so the, now that's the popular story. Mm-hmm. There's another whole thing going on about him actually, that it was actually a plot. Now, I don't know if that's true enough. There's a whole conspiracy thing that's been going around a few years mm-hmm. about him not caving in to the needs of the record business mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. gangsters that were involved with it at one wow, point. Wow, yeah. And Sam was, what, 27 29, something like that. He was somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. He was somewhere around there. Yeah, I remember hearing that story, and I'm like, and then I I guess he lived here. He was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he lived here. But he didn't live off of Figueroa. 95th and Figueroa. (laughs) Yeah. Anybody know LA? The other side of town. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the book that your, um, what is it? Your nephew, nephew mm-hmm. wrote. What's the mm-hmm. title of that, and is it out already? It's, it's, it's entitled "Recorded in Hollywood: The John Dolphin Story." 
Uh, it's been out now about two years. Okay. And now the play is going on now. The play is going on now through uh, July 26th. And it's called? Month. It's called Recorded in Hollywood, the job. Oh, okay. oh, so yeah. it's, based it's based on the book. And where book. is the play taking place? It's at the Hudson Theater. Uh, the Hudson is on Santa Monica Boulevard, about six blocks west of Vine. Oh. And where could people get tickets and find out more information? Recordedinhollywood.com. Mm-hmm. And there's a button there to, to be able to buy tickets. Hey. And okay. It, now, do you you guys see this as a movie? You think? Is, are you getting so, that buzz? So these Cadillac that, Records, we, there's yeah. five the heartbeats. I mean, yeah, I, I don't see why not. We we are getting that buzz. We and uh, a TV commentator asked me. I did a TV interview not too long ago, and mm-hmm. it was the first time somebody mentioned movie, mm-hmm. and I stuttered on national TV. But <laughs> it, it was like, I mean, this is. I mean, I never would have dreamed this. My father's been gone a long time. Mm -hmm. And to be at this point where people are actually wanting to know the story just amazes me still. Wow. Mm -hmm. Still. Mm -hmm. And and every night of the play, and I'm there a lot, Mm -hmm. every night of the play, somebody said, oh, man, I remember my mother used to work in Dolphins of Hollywood. I remember when this happened. I remember when that happened. We we released Earth Angel. You know the song Earth Angel. It was written by Jimmy. Jesse Belvin, but it's performed by the by uh, the Penguins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we broke that record, we had five thousand people in the store in two days. Wow! Wow! To buy that out, to buy that record, wow. Wow. buy that forty-five. Wow! What is it that um, uh, you would like people to know about your dad that hasn't really been said yet in the book or in the play? Well, for me, it's about all of. Central Avenue, mm-hmm. not just my dad, but what my dad represented, what our history represents. Mm-hmm. I give lectures on Central Avenue because it's in my heart. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I always say to folks, Los Angeles is the capital of forgetting. Yeah. Mm. And if that happens, that's our fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really is our fault because Central Avenue was something. Mm. And it was not the ghetto. It might have been, it might have been black and brown because we were relegated to live in there mm-hmm. because of the real estate covenants. But it was our place. There was nothing ghetto about Central Avenue at all back in the day. Butterfly McQueen, who won an Oscar for Gone with the Wind, was part of that community off of Central Avenue. Mm. Dr. Ralph Bunch in 1948 was the most powerful black man in the world, mm-hmm. even more than our President Obama is today. In mm. 1948, Ralph J. Bunch was Secretary General of the United Nations. Mm. Do we talk about that? Do our schools Mm-mm. talk about that no. here in Los Angeles? Mm-mm. No, they don't. Don't they have an elementary school named after them? But I know yes. they have a bunch hall at UCLA. That's the only reason I know about them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you went to UCLA? I went to UCLA. Fuck out. <laughs> don't, be, don't be mad. I went to college. You said, <laughs> Why are you always trying to get bougie when I we mean, have guests? I mean, well, you know, I, 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 you I, know, I went to UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I went to college. Not my fault. <laughs> Sorry. Not, not a CC. <laughs> University. <laughs> Well, Mr. But Dauphin. I think, the, but I think, it, I mean, just really, it's it's, it's about us. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is about us and our history and who we are. You know, we are somebody. We yeah. we contributed to the planet, to the world. Yes, yeah, that's I, what we did. It's not just that we had this story, had that story. It's like we were something, mm. and we should be. We should be. Every black person in Los Angeles should be walking around with some pride on their chest, right? Because mm. yeah. they got something to be proud of. That heritage. That whole bit. I mean, it's not like, you know, we push you in the corner and y'all will get back to you later. So you got something to lean back on. Mm. And other communities in Los Angeles, they haven't done that. Right. Mm -hmm. They still got their places. They still got their landmarks. They just, I mean, they still got their places. And and they still got their, you know, where they were. For me, Central Avenue is about, about where we evolved from, where our communities evolved from. The Dunbar Hotel. The Dunbar Hotel was the only five-star hotel for black folks in Los Angeles because we couldn't sleep no place else. Mm. Didn't Ru- Rudy Ray Moore buy that place or own that or live there for a while and did a lot of his movies there? Rudy Ray Moore not only did Dolomite, some movies there, Dolomite, but after my dad died, he became my stepmother's business advisor. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we went from one store to six stores to zero stores. Bless you, Dolomite. <laughs> 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 Uh, but yeah, he was, and there there were a few other folks who owned it. But you know, it wasn't in good care. I mean, Jan Perry and I and a few other folks, we 
you know, really worked hard for this $14 million they were just invested in the Dunbar Hotel and the Dunbar Complex mm. just two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it did back in 1928 when it was built. Wow. And where's it located? Forty Second and Central Avenue. I'm gonna have to go by there and see. Which that is place. right where the law, the Central Avenue Jazz Festival is happening the weekend of July 25th. And oh 26th. yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. You're involved with that as well, I'm right? Involved with that for. And and what is that? Is it a block party type thing? What is? Oh, oh it's a long block party. We block off all of Central Avenue from Vernon down to about um, oh to Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. uh, shut down the street. We got three stages. We got blues. We got jazz. Wow. Uh, we have some young people. We have some older people. We have big bands. We have small groups. And this is uh, this month, right? It is this month, July 25th and 26th. It's all day. It's free. Mm -hmm. There's lots and lots of food and vendors and everything else. And it is, we've been told more than once, it is the most legitimate festival on the West Coast. Wow. Can we hang out? Can we? Yeah. Please. It's free. No, I meant like the show. Yeah. Like, yeah, we just absolutely. go set up a table and <laughs> yeah. she's like, bring our mics. <laughs> oh, it's like it's free. You bring your Mr. Microphone. <laughs> say what you want to say. I'm live right here on the corner of, oh, shit, he got a gun. I ain't here. <laughs> I'm going to be on the other corner in a minute. No, I'll, I'll take way. care of y'all for VIP. Oh, all right. right. See, all right. What, well, we appreciate you coming for by for the show. we eat all day. So Okay. There it is. Um, now you're going to look at me when you say eat all day. You like you're that? wrong. <laughs> you see his eyes got heavy. Okay, that's what VIP means to me. <laughs> <laughs> VIP snacks. Anything else you would like to add? Uh, please come out and see the play. It's a piece of history. I think it will tell it even better than I do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard for me to tell it. It's my dad. Okay. And I can brag about my I can dad. tell you're still yeah. very passionate and emotional about it. And that's, that's beautiful, a beautiful man. thing. And. We will we will definitely support the event and come out. He to said the he has tickets festival. to give away. Yeah, he's got a, give away. I've got a pair of tickets to give away. You only have to answer one question. Okay. What does Hound Dog, the song Hound Dog, mean to Central Avenue? All right. That number is 323-293-3375. Go hit up your grandmoms or your... If you live in Los Angeles, you live in Chicago, don't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what it is. I know exactly what it is. Yeah, so if you're in the Los Angeles area and would like to win these tickets, answer that question. Uh, what, tonight, what does Hound Dog mean to Central Avenue? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Dolphin, for spending time. Don't leave with without us. telling us now. Don't leave without telling us. <laughs> we'll get the answer off there. <laughs> I don't and we'll it. be right back. Don't move uh, right back. With the rollout show.